Hi, my name is Matt Matwijic. I'm a forester with the Coalition for the Upper South Platte. Today we're filming uh, segment number three, Eliminating Mountain Pine Beetle. Uh, my name is Andy Pascarella, uh, Assistant District Forester with the Colorado State Forest Service. This is the Woodland Park District and we cover El Paso, Teller, and Park Counties. So once you've identified an infested tree on your property, there's a number of different management techniques you can use to, to deal with that infestation. Uh, first of all, you can chip the tree. Uh, by chipping the tree up, it kills all the beetles. Uh, you can also debark it, strip off all the bark, let it sit in the sun. Uh, do this in the winter time so that way it has enough time to bake and cook those beetles. You can also burn the infested wood. Uh, obviously by burning the wood that will kill the beetles as well. You can also haul infested logs out of your forest to a safety site which is about three miles uh, away from any other susceptible pine species in the forest. Some reports say that it's at least one mile away, uh, but the, forest, the U.S. Forest Service has seen beetle flight over one mile. Uh, so for the Coalition for CUSP, we recommend you at least have a three-mile buffer uh, from your safety site to other susceptible pine trees. That way that totally eliminates the risk of beetles flying into your uh, healthy trees. So those are four of the management techniques. There's also the solar treatment, which we're going to do today. Uh, you cut down your tree. Cut them in the logs. And then wrap them in plastic. Sit them in a sunny spot and let the sun cook those beetles. You want to do this by April 1st. Uh, that way the heat of the sun will cook those beetles uh, all spring and all, and all summer uh, so you won't have any beetle flight issues in July. All right, so we're going to do the solar treatment here. So far, we've identified two infested trees. We've already cut them down and cut them into about three foot lengths. We're going to stack them flat on the ground. Uh, you also want to dig out a trench around your, your uh, infested logs. So as you can see here, we've got the site prepped. Uh, next thing we're going to do is cover the logs, cut the plastic to the size we need. Uh, we're going to be using a 6 mil uh, heavy duty plastic to cover our uh, infested logs. Uh, you really want to make sure you got a thick plastic because if that plastic is thinner than that 6 mil, then uh, odds are it could break or the wind could blow it off. So you want to make sure you use a heavy duty plastic. Because once we cover the logs, we're going to backfill with this dirt and make sure we got a lot of weight on the edges of the plastic uh, so it doesn't blow away or roll downhill or something like that. Okay, another thing you want to remember when doing solar treatment. Anytime you're doing the treatment in the winter before April 1st, you actually don't even need to use plastic. You can just lay your logs out, make sure they're in a very sunny spot, um, and the, the beetles will cook under that under the bark all spring and into, into summer. Uh, you do want to rotate the logs, um, that way the, each side gets enough sun. Uh, but anytime after April 1st, you have to use the plastic, uh, just because the, the beetles won't have enough time to cook naturally uh, by just rotating the logs. You'll need to use that plastic to generate enough heat and cook them uh, anytime after April 1st. All right, that's it for video segment number three, eliminating mountain pine beetle. Remember, if you find beetle on your property, it's your responsibility to treat it. If you find it on the Forest Service property, make sure you notify the U.S. Forest Service, and they will come out and have a forester look at it and take care of it.